everyone and welcome to The Guitar Show. My name's Connor Selby and Ramon has asked me to make a video trying to help you guys to get the Eric Clapton Blues Breakers tone and uh, how to approach that style of playing. I've been a big fan of Eric Clapton for many years and I've spent a lot of time studying his playing, particularly from that era. And there are a few tips and tricks that I've picked up along the way that I think you guys will really appreciate. So when it comes to actually getting that sound, there are a few things you really need to consider. Obviously, the way you play is really important. Uh, the way you phrase, the amount of attack you use with your pick, stuff like that. And um, also the gear that you use. The gear is really important to getting that sound as well. I know it's very common knowledge what Eric Clapton used on that album, but there are a few details and nuances I think people often overlook. I'm going to try and touch upon. The gear I'm using today to try and get this sound is uh, a 1959 uh, Gibson Custom Shop reissue Les Paul fitted with Wiz PAF replica pickups. I think it's really important that you try and get your hands on some uh, decent PAF clones because even with the Custom Shop guitars, the pickups that they tend to put in the, the Les Pauls and you know, all the guitars tend to be quite muddy and not really indicative of what an actual PAF sounds like. I think if you listen to the Beano album, there's a lot of bright, clear tones coming from Eric. And I think a lot of this is down to the pickups. Amp-wise, what I'm using is a 90s Marshall Blues Breaker reissue. I think any Plexi Marshall style amp will get you close. Um, Eric Clapton famously used a vintage JTM 45 combo. Um, but what I really want to emphasize about the way you set your amp is that you need to make it really clear and bright. Lots of people tend to use too much gain um, and they tend to make their sound way too muddy when they try and approach this tone. If you actually listen to the record, even though on certain songs like Stepping Out and Hide Away, there is a lot of distortion, relatively speaking, for that time and um, he does have quite a thick tone it's still really clear and really bright and that's so important when it comes to picking up all the nuances of his playing which I'll get onto shortly so yeah just to conclude make sure you set your amp really bright and really clearly gain is important but only in so far as that it thickens the sound slightly Eric's playing is largely uh, inspired by the blues players that came before him. Obviously people like B.B. King, Freddie King, Albert King, Otis Rush, etc. But I think what really sets him apart from those guys is the way that he kind of was able to seamlessly blend musical phrases in a way that no one else has really been able to do since or before. I think if you listen to the extended jams in Cream, he really takes that idea to its kind of logical conclusion. In terms of his vocabulary, most of it is uh, as I say, from the blues vernacular. He's also very inspired by singers, people like Ray Charles, Aretha Franklin, and the way you know they kind of phrase as vocalists. I think fundamentally Eric was really interested in making the guitar sound like a, a human voice, which, when you think about it in terms of that, really kind of explains a lot of his choices as a player. 
What I mean by this is that if you listen to the way he bends notes, you know, he's always bending notes, um, kind of it, even just micro bends. He never really plays a note straight. And obviously his vibrato as well is very dynamic and very emotional. So just to demonstrate what I'm talking about, um, if you take a normal player, they might play a phrase, something like this. But if Eric were to play that, he would he'd probably play it something like this. And if you hear, uh, there's a lot of aggression in the way I'm playing, and also there's kind of micro, a lot of micro bending, especially in that last. If you ever listen to the uh, the cream. 1968 interview where he sort of goes over his technique. You can see this in action. Uh, stuff like that. He's always kind of bending into the note. Um, which is really important. Also his vibrato, if you listen to a lot of the solos on the Beano album, um, you can hear him doing a lot of stuff like this. So if we're in the key of C now, you, you know. It's quite quick. Quite aggressive. Staccato as well, you know. He doesn't really. I mean, in Cream, he kind of loosened up a bit, and his playing got less aggressive and more fluid. But especially on the Beano album, it's very staccato. <laughs> There's so much aggression. Sonic. So bring the key of G again. Uh, so might play a minor for I hope that's given you some more insight into how to play in the style of Eric Clapton during the Blues Breakers period. Also, if you're interested, I've, I've got my own band, I do my own thing. I've got an album out and we recently just released a new single. I was also supposed to be supporting John Mayall in November of last year, but sadly he got ill, so it's been postponed until probably early next year. And I'm also due to support The Who in March of next year as well. Thanks very much for watching.